And he has class. The model versus Mr. Perfect. Bro, this was when I just went off the fucking cliff. I was like, I've sat through 40 minutes of absolute shit. But now, how in the world could Kurt Hennig versus Rick Martell? How could this not be a great match? And the answer is they thought they were on a house show in Moose Jacket, Saskatchewan. A sea town. 15 fucking people in the crowd. They had the most nothing happened in boring bullshit match I ever saw in my entire fucking life. And it went forever. And finally. And they missed the finish. Finally, Kurt Hennig starts making this big fucking comeback. And Vince goes, that would be a great time to go to a break. And I went, what? Now's the worst time to go to a fucking break. You're going to a break in the middle of this fucking comeback? They go to a goddamn fucking commercial, and they come back, and Perfect's music is playing. And he's waving everywhere. I'm like, what? And Vince goes, oh, the finish happened during the break. I'll show you what happened. We actually got to see the Perfect Plex. They show a replay of Perfect hitting the fucking Perfect Plex. And then I'm thinking, oh, they're going to show the replay and be off the air. No, they show the replay. They go back to Perfect. He's going, hey, everybody. Oh, here's some women. I'm going to let all the women into the ring. And he sits on the rope, and he lets the first girl into the ring. And then he sits on the other rope. He lets the other girl in the ring. And then he holds both their arms. He starts strutting around, and he's waving. I'm like, how much fucking time do we have left? And you couldn't fucking show us the finish? God! That's what set me off. But this was Vince's booking genius to get Mr. Perfect over as a baby face. God. <sighs> Rick Martell will take the two cute girls to the back and Kurt Hennig will bring them back and everyone will love him because he brought the pretty girls back. Yes. That's the build for babyface Kurt Hennig to WrestleMania. Yes. Against in a big match against Luger. <laughs> yeah. Fairly Which Vince match. professed at the beginning might be one of the greatest wrestling matches ever. <laughs> yeah. I contend it wasn't. You know what? It wasn't. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I would bet it's not. Although, you know what? On that WrestleMania, it might have been the best match on the show for all I know. <laughs> I'd have to go back. I mean, the pickings are fucking slim. <laughs> Did you mention, Brian, that this commercial break that happened during the finish, it was also the second commercial break of the match because it just went forever? And it wasn't good. No. It was another house show match. Like It's like they haven't figured out they're on national television live yet. It was a house show match where they were the only two guys. There was like a blizzard, and they were the only two guys who made it to the building on time. So you guys got to go 60. You know what it probably is? So this is like the brand new era. Is like in WWF, you used to get paid peanuts for television. Because you got paid yes. off the house. Yes. Mm. And these guys were probably looking at, like, this is a tiny house for television. I'm going to get my 150 bucks. I'll work hard on the house shows where there's, like, a big gate and I'll actually get a payday. Because TV, up until this era, was you showed up, you did a bunch of squash matches, and then you left. They're not used to television matches being important. They used to just cut promos on television to squashes, so they probably weren't accustomed to actually thinking television was big or that you got paid well for television. That's true, by the way, everybody. If you've never heard those stories, I mean, in that era, Mm -hmm. you didn't get paid jack shit to do television because the theory was, I'm doing you a fucking favor by putting you on national television. Like, you're lucky you're getting paid for this. And they get paid off off the house shows and the pay-per-views and that sort of thing, but TV... Like, some guys were making probably like 50 bucks for television. National television. That's what you'd make. It's very strange. So the highlight, if you want to call it that, of this match actually didn't happen in the ring. It happened on the announce desk, at the announce desk. So Rob Bartlett had, I still don't honestly know how he got this job, but he was clearly in way over his head from moment one. And there's a three dudes talking, and there's just nothing happening in the match. They're trying to fill time. They're trying to put on a show. And Savage starts talking about uh, Bartlett's performance last week as Elvis Presley. And he says something about how there's a big movement to bring Elvis back next week to replace you. And and Bartlett mutters, yeah, there's also a big movement to bring back Bobby Heenan to replace you. There is the most painful pause you've ever heard as Randy Savage contemplates whether he should murder this man on live television or not. (laughs) As Rob Bartlett ponders, am I about to be murdered on live television? 
as Vince ponders, can I get them to a break so at least the murder will happen during the commercial break? And eventually, Savage comes out of it and says something like, you're funny, Bartlett. Not like, ha ha, but it's cool. And uh, Bartlett figures that he is treading on treacherously thin ice and just starts being Elvis again in an attempt to make Randy happy and not murder him. Did you catch, I just, re- just rem- I remembered it when you did that, at the beginning of this match, Vince asked Randy Savage, who's he picking? And he says, t- um, Rick Martell. And then Vince asks Rob Bartlett who he's got. And with, like, no comedy, but just dead pan, he goes, didn't you tell me Perfect's winning, Vince? <laughs> No. And Vince, like, cuts him off right away. I, I and did I'm not like, I that. I think Bartlett accidentally stooged off that Vince gave him the finish ahead of time. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. Didn't you tell me Perfect's winning? Well, everyone, that was Raw uh, 8. Next week, Kamala in action. Oh. Razor Ramon in action. And in your main event... Bam Bam Bigelow versus Typhoon. Oh, my God. That sounds horrible. So this show ends. Especially I, if it's a house show match. Oh, my God. So Lan- I also got the text from Lance warning me about what a terrible show this was. And so my expectations were low going in. And, like, for a while, I was like, it's bad, but all these shows are bad. And then by the end of the show, I was just done. And when it was over, as you all know, if you listen to the show for any length of time, I, I'm an a, a, a eternal optimist. I'm always trying to find the bright side of things. All I could think was, can you imagine if this had been a two-hour show oh. and we had to watch 60 more minutes of this garbage? God. Jesus. So, yeah, thumbs down to Raw 8. Well, luckily, we have many, 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 many years before it goes to two hours. So It is Wrestling Observer Live today. I'm Oreo the Orca. Do you have a blowhole rating system? Like, if you're really excited about a match, it gives you yeah, six this, squirts? this match was... Was uh, two and three quarter holes, if you must know. So I was watching this show and they had a bunch of videos for this Liv Morgan about how, oh, my whole life I've been a wrestling fan. Oh, I'm going to win my first title ever. There's children cheering and going, oh, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I do indeed. <laughs> hey, Danhausen, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear Danhausen? Hey, look at that. Holy hey. mother of God, look what we've done here. You broke a leg. Is that true? Uh, it was broken in half, snapped in two. The doctor said it was a tibia and a fibula. Uh, I'm a whale and not a doctor, but is it not a fibula and not a fibia? A fibula? What I know. Perhaps what? the doctor lied to Dan Housen. You know, Dan Housen, if you were a whale, you wouldn't have broken your leg. This is true because whales don't have legs. What did you grow up watching as a little evil man? Kane ripping off the door when he debuted. Yes. How old were you, Dan Housen, when that match took place? All about, uh, what was that, 1997, so about 700 years old. Oh. Also, one time Dan Housen had Dolph Ziggler's theme song as his alarm, and it went off in class. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yes, it's true. Dan Housen likes Dolph Ziggler. You like Dolph Ziggler? He's good matches. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.